Hello everyone, my name is John Jarko. I'm a deputy editor at the New England Journal of Medicine. And I'm very happy to be here on the floor of the meetings of the European Society of Cardiology here in Paris, France. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about some of the interesting trials that the New England Journal of Medicine is publishing online simultaneously with the presentations of the papers here at the meeting. One of the interesting trials that was presented here yesterday is a trial called the Complete Trial, which was a trial that evaluated the question of whether patients who are undergoing primary PCI for an acute ST elevation myocardial infarction should also have revascularization of non significant non-culprit lesions that are found in other coronary arteries during the catheterization procedure. There have been a number of previous smaller trials that have demonstrated that there probably is a benefit in this setting to revascularizing non-culprit lesions, but those trials were sufficiently small that the evidence that they were able to gather really rested on the ability to prevent subsequent revascularization procedures. And no trial had been large enough to this time to evaluate the question using hard clinical endpoints of cardiovascular death or myocardial infarction. The complete trial, which was much larger than previous clinical trials in this space, was designed to do exactly that. Patients who are undergoing primary PCI for SD elevation myocardial infarction were randomized to two groups. Uh, one group was to undergo non-culprit lesion revascularization to be performed at a subsequent procedure to the main procedure at the time of the original catheterization. The other group was randomized to undergo no further revascularization unless they developed clear-cut manifestations of cardiac ischemia or other cardiac events. The trial had two co-primary outcomes, one being cardiovascular death or myocardial infarction, the other being cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, or urgent, urgent target vessel revascularization. And the trial successfully demonstrated a significant benefit on both of these co-primary outcomes, thus indicating that it is desirable to revascularize non-culprit lesions the only proviso being that it sh should not be done in the same setting as the original PCI, since that would not, was not tested in this trial. It did appear in the trial that it didn't make any difference whether the second revascularization procedure was performed during the same hospitalization or on a subsequent hospitalization later on. A second trial uh, of great interest and one that was uh, very highly awaited was the Paragon HF trial. The Paragon HF trial was a trial conducted in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction to evaluate the potential benefits of Secubitril Valsartan in such patients. Secubitril Valsartan has already been shown to be beneficial in patients with heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction, and it was hoped that there might be benefit in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction as well. This is a difficult patient population, one in which a number of promising therapies have been found not to be beneficial, and the hope was that this trial would be different. Patients were randomized to either Secubitril Valsartan or to Valsartan alone. They initially went through two screening periods during run-in for which they were tried with first with first Valsartan and then Secubitril Valsartan to be certain that they had reasonable tolerance to both medications. Provided that was the case, they were randomized in the trial. The primary outcome of the trial was total heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular death, a composite outcome which allowed more than one endpoint per patient and which required spe special statistical methodology to analyze. The result, disappointingly, was that again, in this trial, there was not a statistically significant benefit of Secubitril Valsartan compared to Valsartan alone in this patient population. 
There were some findings in secondary outcomes which did suggest the possibility that there might be some degree of benefit in this group if you looked at things such as New York Heart Association classification and Kansas City cardiomyopathy score, but in the absence of a significant benefit on the primary outcome, these findings have to be taken with some caution. In addition, there was an interesting finding on subgroup analysis that suggested that patients on the lower end of the ejection fraction range might benefit from this treatment, whereas patients on the higher end of the ejection fraction range did not, thus suggesting that the patients in the original Paradigm HF trial with an ejection fraction of less than 40% who benefited, that there might also be benefit above that ejection fraction range up to the range of perhaps 50% or so, thus in patients who had not truly reduced but not quite normal ejection fractions. A third trial which present, was presented today and which had unexpected results was the ISAR REACT-5 trial. This was an interesting trial that made a head-to-head -head comparison of two antiplatelet agents, Ticagrelor and Crassiogrel, to see how these two drugs performed in patients who presented with an acute coronary syndrome and who were undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention. Both of these drugs have been separately compared to clopidogrel and found to be beneficial, but there had never been a very large head-to-head -head comparison of the two drugs. Some smaller head-to-head -head studies had been inconclusive. The authors anticipated that they would find that ticagrelor was superior to prasigrel for the compositive outcome of cardiovascular death, stroke, or myocardial infarction. To their surprise, they found the reverse. They actually found that Prasigrel was superior to Ticagrelor. With regard to safety, the two drugs were compared for the endpoint of major bleeding, and it was found that there was no significant difference between the groups, thus suggesting, against the original anticipations of the investigators, that Prasigrel may in fact be the preferred drug in this clinical setting. These are just some of the major clinical trials that the New England Journal has published online uh, to coincide with presentations uh, at the uh, uh, meetings of the European Society of Cardiology. For full details of these trials and for other papers that we have published with the meeting, uh, please consult our website, www.nejm.org. Thank you.